Okay, this is going to be the start of our new unit. It's called ionic bonding. We're going to talk about covalent bonding in this unit as well, but ionic is going to be the first topic that we're going to cover. Okay, so a lot of the stuff that I'm going to say in this video is going to be review, and you've seen it before, but it's a good idea to um, kind of look at it again to make sure that you understand exactly what's happening based off of the trends of the periodic table. Okay, so the first thing I want to make sure that you're aware of is that valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost energy level, right? So we're going to talk about the electrons that are furthest away from the nucleus that actually do the chemistry in a chemical reaction, okay? So electron configuration can tell us valence electrons based on how many electrons are in the s and p orbital, and then we can do this Lewis dot structure based off of this. So I'm going to do a few of these, and then I'll let you uh, continue the rest of the chart. So the first one's easy. It's just hydrogen. Right? Hydrogen's right here. If I was to draw the electron configuration for hydrogen, it would just be 1s1, which means it has one electron in the 1s energy level, okay? And since there's only one electron, that means it has one valence electron. Therefore, hydrogen's Lewis dot will look something like this, okay? So far, so good. Okay, helium's the next one, which is also pretty easy. It's also in the 1s energy level, but if I count, it's going to be one, two electrons in the 1s energy level, which means... Um, helium is our only noble gas that doesn't have eight electrons in its outermost shell. It has two, but it's completely content with two electrons considering it only has one energy level that can hold those two electrons. So helium's electron um, configuration is going to look something like this. Okay, Lithium. Lithium's underneath hydrogen. So I'm going to go hydrogen, helium, which is going to be my 1s2. And then lithium's in the 2s energy level, which means it's going to be 2s, and there's only one electron. And then this one electron in the 2s energy level means that it has one valence electron. Therefore, its Lewis dot structure will look something like this. Okay? Beryllium next to lithium is going to be 1s2, 2s2. This 2 energy level means that there's two valence electrons outside, which means that it's going to be beryllium with two valence electrons, okay? I'll do two more, considering these two are in the p orbitals, okay? So boron, which is all the way over here, after beryllium, is going to go 1s2, 2s2, 2p1, okay? So the 2s and the 2p are the outermost energy level, which means boron is going to have three valence electrons, and its electron configuration will look like this, okay? One more, nitrogen. 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, oh, I'm sorry, 2p3, I skipped carbon, okay? So these five electrons indicate five valence electrons, where nitrogen's Lewis structure will look something like this, okay? I'll give you a second to finish up the chart, and we'll talk about the trend. Okay, so the rest of your chart should look something like this, okay? So let's kind of talk about a trend that we've already established in our previous units, okay? The outermost electron, so the outermost energy level, and if I look at sulfur down here, its outermost energy level is 3. And if I count 2 plus 4 is 6, that indicates that there's 6 valence electrons, right? So if I look at oxygen and sulfur, they're in the same family or the same group. Therefore, they have the same number of valence electrons. Therefore, their Lewis dot structure looks similar. Therefore, it will bond probably with two things because it has two empty electrons on their, um, on their outermost shell, okay? So those are Lewis dot structures, and that's a good review for if you are still struggling with that. Okay, now let's talk about the octet rule, which we talked about, talked about a little bit um, at the end of the last unit, but let's just kind of rethink about this, okay? So um, in forming compounds, atoms will gain or lose electrons to become like the noble gas that's closest to them, okay? So metals, so to the left of the staircase, will tend to lose electrons to become um, like noble gases, meaning they're moving down in energy level, where nonmetals will gain electrons to fill their current energy level to achieve eight electrons in its outermost shell. Okay, so let's do a couple of examples of these and see whether you can tell me whether it's going to gain or lose electrons, okay? So lithium is a metal, okay? Therefore, it's going to lose its electrons. And since if I look at the periodic table, lithium is right here. It's one electron loss away to be like helium. So it'll lose one electron 
to become like helium, okay? Nitrogen, metal or nonmetal, it's going to be a nonmetal. Therefore, it's going to gain electrons. And if I look at the periodic table, nitrogen is one, two, three electrons away from becoming like neon. Therefore, it will gain three electrons, okay? I'm going to do one more, and then I'll let you fill in the chart, and you can check. Oxygen is a nonmetal. Therefore, it will gain electrons. And if I look at the periodic table, it needs to gain one, two to become like neon. Therefore, it will um, gain two electrons. Okay, so go ahead and take a second to fill in the rest of this chart for me. Okay, so if I look at the rest of this chart, we're going to see, um, again, a trend based on where those elements are on the periodic table, right? So fluorine is a nonmetal, one away from neon. Therefore, it will gain one electron to become like neon. Neon is a nonmetal, however, it already has its octet, therefore it's not going to lose or gain any electrons, therefore it won't form a bond with any atoms. Okay, potassium will lose one electron, calcium will lose two electrons, and then bromine will gain one electron. Okay, so then I can use this trend to talk about whether I'm going to form a cation, which is a positively charged ion, or an anion, which is a negatively charged ion, okay? So considering metals have to lose electrons to become like noble gases, most metals tend to be cations, okay? So any atoms loss of valence electrons will become a positive charge as a cation, okay? So let's look at a couple of examples with this. So if I look at lithium, lithium is atomic number is three, which means that it has three protons. It has to go get, uh, lose one electron to become like helium, okay? Therefore, we'll only have two electrons left, right? Because in a neutral atom, lithium will have three electrons and three protons, okay? So once it loses that one electron, sorry, let me make it lost a little bit better. Once it loses that one electron, I have one proton that is not being covered up. Therefore, the net charge is going to be plus one. So I'm going to write lithium as a plus one charge, okay? So that's how we're going to write our cations here. Magnesium, on the other hand, if I look at magnesium, magnesium has an atomic number of 12. And in a neutral species, it will also have 12 electrons, okay? But how many electrons does magnesium want to lose? Magnesium wants to lose two electrons to become like neon, okay? So now I have 12 protons and only 10 electrons, right? So if I only have 10 negative charges and 12 positive charges, magnesium will form a plus 2 charge, making it magnesium plus 2. Okay, I'm going to do one more, and then I'll let you practice the rest of them. Aluminum has 13 protons. It's going to lose 3 electrons to become like neon, which means that it only has 10 electrons with a plus 3 charge, making it aluminum plus 3. Okay? So go ahead and try calcium and potassium. Okay, now I can kind of see a trend moving along here, okay? So calcium will, or potassium will lose one electron, giving it 18 electrons with a plus one charge, okay? So again, lithium and potassium will have plus one charges because they're in that group one, okay? Now this is kind of funny, right? So if you remember your Bohr models, you'll have, um, it goes 2, 8, 8, right? Uh, um, 18. So if we look at this, this is where those numbers start to fall in play. Okay, and don't get too caught up on that, especially since we're not writing Bohr models anymore. So you'll realize that group one is going to be our plus one charge, our group two is going to be plus three, and aluminum is going to be plus three. Okay, I'm sorry, group two is plus two, and then aluminum is plus three. Okay, all right, so let's look at our nonmetals then, or our formation of anions and our trend there. Okay, so if cations are the loss or the losing of electrons to become positive, anions mean if you gain an electron, you're going to become negatively charged, right? Because now you have more electrons than you do protons inside of the nucleus, okay? So if cations are metals, anions are going to be our nonmetals. So let's look at some examples here. Nitrogen's atomic number is 7. It's going to gain 3 to become like neon. Therefore, I have three more electrons than I do protons. So now I have a total of 10 electrons, which means I'm going to have a net charge of negative 3. And I will write nitrogen as N minus 3, indicating that it has gained three electrons. Okay? Oxygen's atomic number is 8. 
it gains two electrons. Look at this, 10 electrons. Why? Who has 10 electrons? Neon. Okay, full outer shell. Therefore, oxygen's charge will be negative 2, making it O negative 2. Okay, and I'll do one more. Fluorine has 9 protons. It's going to gain 1. Would you look at that? 10 electrons, just like neon, making its charge negative 1, making it fluorine minus 1. Okay, take a second to do phosphorus and chlorine for me. Okay, same thing here. We see a trend, right, based off the family where they're in. So group 15, where nitrogen is, those are going to form a negative 3 charge. Group 16, where oxygen is, those are going to form negative 2 charges. And group 17, where our halogens are, are going to form negative 1 charges. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you understand cations and anions better now. Thank you.